Your guide to the truth. The new American media dot com. All right, everybody. My name is Brian Engelman. We're here at the 2018 Politicon Convention at the Los Angeles Convention Center in Los Angeles, California. I'm here with Mo Kelly from KFI, 640 AM, more stimulating talk radio. Mo, how are you today? It's a shame that you know our tagline, okay? That's what we call lock-in and lock-out line. But that means you've done your homework. Bro, KFI has been like one of my only islands of sanity since I moved here 13 years ago. 13 years ago. Well, KFI is a monster when it comes to political talk, and it is the number one news talk station in the country. I'm not bragging or anything, but it's nice to be on it, and it also provides me a platform to be able to reach as many people as possible. In a world where most audio is digital now, Mm -hmm. we're still talking about a broadcast transmitter in which a station can be heard in 14 different states at night. Okay, so you're still heard terrestrially. Explain the difference between, because uh, obviously iHeart and and, and, and the digital landscape has totally shifted. It's changed where where people with a blog and a podcast can have just as much influence as MSNBC because their ratings are garbage. Explain what you're saying about how you have a terrestrial reach with KFI. Yeah, KFI is is like a dual-headed monster because you have the terrestrial aspect. We have a broadcast transmitter, 50,000 watts, So we can be heard up and down California if you're in your car. And still, most cars don't have Internet access. And that's that's the bridge. And you'll have, I'll say, the sunset of broadcast transmitters. The moment they figure out how to get Internet in everybody's car as a as a standard feature, it's Mm. it's 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 not quite there yet. But the moment that happens, then you'll see broadcast transmitters go away. What do they have? They have that, I forget what they call it, with the, where the monkeys, if they open the banana a certain way, it's like when, when, when 51% of the monkeys start doing something, then they, right. it all, all shifts around. And, and if, if people start buying their vehicles that have this access, um, then it'll make the shift that now most vehicles will have that. Um, are you familiar with Michael Hastings? Yes, to a certain degree, yeah. I mean, you're familiar with, with his, his uh, he had a paranoia about people hacking his car and then there were some reports that came out that some of this stuff could be accessed digitally. And any you thoughts have, on that? Just you, you have to worry about that. Anything which is not air gapped, in other words, separated from the Internet, right. it's liable to be hacked on some level. And we can talk about voting machines. We can talk about our refrigerator. Absolutely, we can yeah. talk about home security systems. If it's connected to the Internet, that means that there is a way, a method of people gaining access to your information or anything which may be connected to the Internet. So, so does that concern you or does Absolutely. that ex- Absolutely. You have to be. Well, put it this way. I'm concerned, but not to the point where I'm unrealistic. I have to assume that anything which has my data has already been hacked and it's already out there. I have to assume that on a certain degree because I'll use a debit card or if, I, if I'm voting or if I'm going to the grocery store and, and, and I swipe one of my credit cards. I mean, so many um, points of entry which have your data I have to work under the assumption that it's already out there. They say Yahoo has been hacked or Sony's been hacked or Facebook has been hacked more recently. Well, of course, Facebook is tied into how many different other applications. Mm -hmm. So I have to assume if you've used your credit card, a debit card, or you voted, or you have what they call the Internet of Things, anything which is connected to the Internet, then you are liable to be hacked. And I just work on the assumption. I work back from the standpoint I've already been hacked, and I try to prepare for that eventuality. Well, one of the one of the stories is uh, your dishwasher is listening to you. You know, it's like why the hell does a dishwasher need to be linked up to the Internet of Things? Just press clean and clean why do you need to be connected? because it's a smart home you know it's, you you want to tell your house to lock the door or if you have one of those ring uh, like my parents they have the, the ring door right and, and and you're connected to your whole neighborhood that's good news and that's also bad news i don't want to advertise yeah I, I don't need everyone to be able to see what's going on in my front door yeah, it's counterintuitive well well and that that's where and it's and i'm digging this by the way it, it's nice to meet you i i, I was just telling uh, mo off off the air i envisioned him a little different and it's great to meet him. Um, you, you know, when, when we talk about the Internet of Things, when we talk about social media, for example, when restrictions are placed on the ability to communicate on the, the big three, you know, you got the YouTube, you got Facebook, you got Twitter. Um, do you have a concern that that can also be used against us if we're not towing the party lines? We've seen more people deplatform, demonetize, shadow banned over the past couple years. And it seems like everything Edward Snowden was telling us is. I mean, it's coming true to a T. Do you have any thoughts on the social media aspect of our ability to communicate with the world? Maybe I'm more of a cynic, but I, when I think about Facebook as a private platform, when I think of YouTube as a private platform, and I think of the amount of money which is invested in those private platforms, I have to assume that there are other interests 
at oh, play. Yeah. I have to assume that there are other desires which are at play in terms of political, social, all those things. In other words, Facebook is not going to be a billion dollar business, multi-billion dollar business, unless its investors are comfortable with how it presents itself. Right. There's a certain line that Facebook does not want to cross. There's a certain line that Twitter does or does not want to cross. Mm -hmm. And they want to make sure that it's accessible and available to as many people, but does not conflict with that. Because when you have these social media platforms, which have gone public, they are now profit motivated. Meaning it's not about the user experience, it's about the investor experience. Mm -hmm. Where if Twitter is going to grow, they need to have more unique users. If Facebook is going to grow, they right. need to have more unique right. users. That means advertisements. That means that you there's certain limitations. Like for example, the Super Bowl is the most watched event in the world. But there's still certain advertisements which CBS and the Super Bowl are not going to accept because they're still concerned about that bottom line. So when you think of these uh, social media platforms as business entities, then you know that there are other issues and desires and interests at play which will always impact it it's not necessarily star chamber political we want to make sure we want these people are not heard but it's still a variable in the equation absolutely and, and jack dorsey getting grief for not banning all of the infowars accounts right. when they were in collude you know everybody just one day they woke up yep on the 19th or whatever day it was alex jones is going to be a non-person like he's just gone um but he's taking grief for uh, jack dorsey for not getting rid of the other people on the network and i just saw something yesterday where the, uh the shareholders are trying to get zuckerberg to step down as the, the chairman of facebook his own company the yes. the same apple play that happened you know back in the day with Macintosh, yeah. I mean, it's it's not his company anymore. In the sense, once you go public, he may have controlling interests, but he's not the primary interest, if you will, as far as what Facebook will become ultimately. As long as he can increase revenue and show that consistent growth, then yes, they'll want him around. But Facebook has received a lot of bad news over the yeah. past twelve months, yeah. and at the same time, when you have more and more bad news or more and more scrutiny, if you're going on Capitol Hill and you're testifying before Congress, mm -hmm. that is not a good business. Plan. Plan. Not a good look. Not a good look. Not at all. So it didn't surprise me that there may have been pressure to force Mark Zuckerberg out. There are countless examples of that where you have someone who will start the company who may be the visionary behind it, but it's not necessarily leading it into the future. Right. Like a Steve Wozniak. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, you just think of Apple and like, how do you get booted for your own company? It's it's such an interesting dynamic today. Um, I wanted to ask you something because I've listened to you on KFI. Uh, what is it, Saturday night? You would, Saturday's Sunday Saturday Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 late afternoon. To, come on, man. Uh, Thirteen years is one of my only people in LA that like makes sense. But um, I've heard you talk about a lot about um, the marvel universe mm -hmm. and, and the superheroes yeah. like so are, do you go to comic-con every year are you a super geek year. like what is i want to get the background before i get into the question i'm about this. i would say i'm more a super geek than a nerd and there's this is some people don't want to there's a difference there's a subtle difference and and the geek is more into the gadgets and the technological aspects okay. of it, maybe video games and so forth. And I would make the distinction, nerd is more into the comic books and the properties and that kind of thing. I was the kid who grew up watching the cartoons but not reading the comic books. I was very much into uh, the video games of the era growing up. So I was more technologically inclined. Okay. You know, I was I was amazed by a Moog synthesizer, the first synthesizer, uh, and I had an Apple II C, the the gadgets of the air. So I would say more geek than nerd. Okay. But the the toys. Yes, the toys. Kind of like Batman or Iron Man. You get the toys. You, you, I get, you, the, I'll get the toys and I'll watch the cartoons. And they didn't have the movies back then. But it was less about the comic books, which is, I would say, more of the nerd culture, if I can make that distinction. Well, that, that, that's, a, that's the story, that's the background, it's, right. it, it's the whole universe that has to be, everything has to be consistent. I wasn't as knowledgeable in a canonical sense. And, and, and you say, well, you're not a nerd, you're more a geek. And I think that's fair in that regard, but working in this capacity now that I'm much more uh, fluent in the nerd portion of the culture, as opposed to just the geek portion. Well, l let me ask you, because there's been a bit of a... Uh, online uproar about some of the last few and it's, and it's I don't think it's really limited to the Star Wars movies but about the SJWs about the social justice warriors perverting the concept of good versus evil and it's a good hey we're, we're gonna fly this thing and we're gonna defeat the bad guy into this and instead now they're just injecting politics and social justice warrior stuff into all of these so it's been a really big online thing discussing this I'm, I'm wondering what, what your thought is on this because I, I know this 
I cannot be the first person bringing this up to you, and I'm sure you've thought about it. I'm projecting a lot there, but I'm assuming. It's unfortunately it's inextricably linked. If you think about Star Wars specifically, when you think about okay, there's stormtroopers. That's a direct reference, a political reference to Nazi Germany. So you can't separate that. It's a spaghetti western, space opera, Star Wars specifically. So there's always good, there's always evil, there's good and there's bad. And then people then want to project themselves as far as whether you're this side or that side. I got into a protracted online debate. Don't ask me why. They're talking about who was actually uh, you know, was was Emperor Palpatine, was he more like Mussolini or was he more like Obama? Uh, and it's like, you know, because people say, well, the trains ran on time. It's like, no, he's a dictator. But it, but they always want to ascribe their own political views to whoever they feel is preferable in these sagas. And, and, and I, I take it tongue in cheek because I'm, I'm more of a Sith guy. Well, well, being a Sith guy, but, you know, Disney and ABC and the whole transition with, with the networks and the control of it, there was, there was a shift. There was a, a noticeable shift over the past couple of films, the past couple of movies, past couple of years. And the fans have noticed. And, and if you want to get into, like, the geek versus the nerd versus the tech guy versus the Star Wars people are, like, at the top of that list. No, and I, and I would say this, and I say this with, with great honesty that I believe that The Last Jedi was the worst Star Wars movie of them all. Mm. If only because they were playing to an audience which was not a Star Wars audience, they were playing to a Disney audience. And I don't believe that they're one and the same. It's uh, Star Wars in its original incarnation was for all ages. This Star Wars trilogy is not for all ages. It's for folks who don't have a connection to the original characters. Mm. It's for people who want more of the Disney channel. And you have, if you think about the original Star Wars cast, um, Han Solo, Harrison Ford, was 35 years old when he played that role. He looked about 25, though. Yeah, but he was 35. And you had uh, um, Carrie Fisher, who was like 19. You had Mark Hamill's maybe 22. But it was playing to a large age set. Obviously, Alec Guinness, I believe, was in his 60s. So there was a wide range. Now you just have these young stars and young heroes. And for someone like me, who's 48, I, there's no one for me to identify with in the Star Wars saga as it's presently constituted. Well, I, I've, I've had a, a couple of meetings with, uh, we'll leave the, the, the stations out of it, but developmental meetings for, for putting projects together. And the key word is millennials. We got to talk to millennials. Right, right. Well, you know, that's the buzzword. That's the people that are buying everything. Well, we need to. Is it Gen Z now as well? I don't, it might have shifted because yeah. I'm not Gen X and I'm not millennial. I'm like 79. So I'm like, I think you're Gen I'm, Y if I'm not mistaken. I'm 69. I'm Gen X. I know that. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you're not millennial. I'm in this weird in between. It's like three and a half years where it's like, we have a certain designation that I haven't even bothered to learn because I don't care. <laughs> um, I just know I grew up without cell phones and it was awesome. I rode my bike around and it was awesome. And mm-hmm. you know, when I was in high school, I had a pager so I could page people and that was awesome at the time. Um, but, but yeah, right. Right now, what you have going on is it, it's just a cultural difference between the way people are growing up now where technology is damn near embedded underneath their skin in a microchip well, versus how dog, we grew up. It's, it's embedded in my dog as a microchip, you know, so we're not that far away. And there are some companies which do that already. So it's, it's here. And, and if you think about it, it's almost impossible to completely unplug. I mean, if you turn on your phone... To, to, to get off the grid now is virtually impossible because even if you don't use electronics, there are enough cameras and everything where you're going to uh, appear on someone's radar. And because of Homeland Security and facial re- recognition, they know who you are. They know where you are, whether you want to be a part of that portion of society or not. You, you didn't have to opt in. That's just the post 9-11 world and this technological revolution world that, in which we live. See, I, I like that you're thinking this way. That that, that you're. Uh, do you consider yourself a futurist, a transhumanist? Like, like where? Because you've obviously you're talking off the grid. You're talking yep. about tracking. Yep. Like, you're obviously hip to this stuff. And some people walk around blissfully unaware. Or they don't give a shit. You know, they don't care. Yeah. But you, I can tell already. You know more than the average bear. I made a conscious decision that I was going to live my life in a certain way because I have professional goals, I have personal goals. There are things I want to do to, like for example, I want to travel. So I went through TSA pre-check, which was, 
you know, a, a mind numbing experience as far as all right. the things they want to know about you, where you've been, who you visited, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where you've lived. Uh, of course, if you've ever been arrested and so forth, that's the American which we live now. Right. And if you want to live in the American, do all the things that average everyday Americans may do, then that means you're going to have to opt into certain things which may be uncomfortable and you may not even agree with politically or ideologically you know i don't even agree with a lot of this but i know that's the price of admission yeah it kind of is um so i mean you're here politicon mm -hmm. what what brought you i mean you're here with kfi i'm yes. guessing mm -hmm. what um you know we're in 2018 we got the midterms coming up we saw the kavanaugh fiasco the me too and it's believe all women right. versus you know is this a salem witch trials like Give me a State of the Union. Mo Kelly, State of the Union. What, what is your impression of what you've seen over the past six months, 12 months? What world are we living in now, and how do you see it going between now and 2020? I'm very concerned because we're moving past the point of anger. Anger is just an emotion, but we're moving to the point of the expression of anger, where it's not just protest. We're, we're having an, an unfortunate incident, and this is not to politicize as far as who is more angry or who's more radical. I, mean, I can talk about the Proud Boys, and I can talk about Antifa. So it's not like a segment of America. It's not necessarily a segment of, of, a, of an ideology. It's just that we are angry as Americans. We're angry that Trump is in office. And I always say to people who are angry that Trump is in office, well, what did you do in 2016 when you had an opportunity to do something about it? If you're mad about Judge Kavanaugh becoming Justice Kavanaugh, we well, should have done something in 2016, and then you could have had a say in who was going to pr uh, produce these next federal judges and, and justices. I think a lot of this anger comes from not knowing our basic civics. And then when you realize how things are turning out, and it may not be the way that you want it to turn out, you want to blame someone. And after you blame someone, then that's where the anger comes out and you get more and more frustrated and you feel that you have to do something. And protesting is fine, but you have to, if you want to take a message or a lesson from the Civil Rights Movement, the whole Civil Rights Movement was about two pieces of legislation, the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. Every march, every demonstration was to put pressure on Americans and also America as the country to move forward to pass the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. So the people are po protesting today, they're aimlessly protesting and they're not getting a result from that. So they become more and more frustrated. Right. And, and then and when, when we used to play with a band, two, two points about my band. Sorry, to, 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 no uh, we play with a band called When Words Fail. And you're seeing with the protest, when words fail, I'm going to shriek, I'm going to scream, and I'm going to yeah. punch. Yeah. And the other thing, I wrote a song called Three Pointing Back. When I would point a finger, I had three pointing back at me. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm just, no, it's them, they're, they're bad, orange man bad. Well, I have three fingers pointing back at me every time I point out. And I think you're onto something there. It's like these people are protesting. They're kind of aimlessly protesting. Right. Um, and something came out recently called the NPC. Have you, have you followed the NPC? So. Okay, so it's, it's the non-player character. It's like the gray face with the, 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 the pointy nose. It's just like in a video game world, these are the non-player characters that just, just do what... No, no, no. They, they do what they're programmed to do. So they go, orange man, bad. Mm -hmm. Trump, bad. Orange man. So it's become this big Twitter thing, and Twitter's now been purging NPC accounts and it. this and that. But it kind of sums up the outrage culture mm -hmm. of a lot of the people on the left where it's just they, they click on MSNBC and go, what should I be outraged and upset about today? And they go, okay. And then they go out and they just regurgitate it like a, like a character in the video game world. But also the, the other side of that to the issues when you have um, a government, when I say government, because it happens with both political parties, which are fine with demonizing the other side. It's one thing to say, hey, the other party has been... Um, um, has been lacking ineffective, ineffective right. or irresponsible but when the rhetoric goes to a place where we're talking about this group is evil or right. you know this group is the enemy of the people yeah, no, it, 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 it inflates it to a way and to a level where you stop seeing them as fellow Americans yeah, Trump is a Nazi Obama's right. a Nazi you right. know we got to hang the traitors and it, it gets to that next that level of, of aggressiveness and once again, words are starting to fail, so you're reaching the, the top of the most disgusting words and the demonization. What do you have left? Well, you have violence. And I always tell people, you know, words still matter. Words will change the world. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as quickly as sometimes people would want them to change, yeah. but you should have a degree of responsibility. And I'm, and I'm always careful about that. It's, it's if I, and if you've listened to the Mo Kelly Show on KFI AM640, more stimulating talk Saturdays and Sundays. I have. Plug. You, you know that I'm extremely careful 
careful because this is not what I believe, but this is how I came to that conclusion. Yeah. And it's not just a, a, a feeling. I'm going to give you some facts in history. It's, and it's, it's an interpretation of, look, here's how we got to where we are. And based on where we are, here's how I'm interpreting it. Like you, you think things through. We don't always agree, but you're thinking it through. And you're, a, you're a voice of... Um, you're a voice of variety at KFI. Well, I also say that um, it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray. I don't believe in right and left. I, I believe in right and wrong. There, there's a core value of beliefs which transcend politics. And there are a lot of times where I think, you know, I may not agree with this particular politician, but their point is correct. It, or it may be moral in nature, which has nothing to do with whether it's a D or an R by the person's name. And there are examples that I can give you thousands of them. But when it comes down to it, if we more looked at right and wrong as opposed to right and left, we would take away a lot of that aggression. That would be great. I, I, I can't stand the violence. I can't stand blocking the street. It's like you want to get together and protest, you have every right to do so. You do not have a right to block ambulance. You don't have a right to you know, bust storefronts and set right. things on fire and, right. and punch, punch a Nazi in yeah. the face because anyone protest. that disagrees with me is now a Nazi. Like, no, that is not protest. Yeah, that is not protected speech. It's yeah. criminality. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess moving into midterms and with it, it being a Politicon, what, what, what is your sense of America right now if you had to prognosticate, if I had to put it's you hard. on the spot there, with, with with the midterms, do you, do, you, do you see the Republicans retaining the House and the Senate, or do you see a blue wave coming? Are you hopeful? Are you concerned about the future of America? Just all of it. I'm concerned about the future of America, um, if only because emotionally I think we're unstable in an emotional sense. Mm -hmm. in, in a political sense, I would expect if history is a guide, the party in power, usually there's a referendum on the party in power, power at the midterms. So I wouldn't call it a blue wave. That's just a natural course of history where the midterms, usually there's a shrinkage of the party in power. There's most likely the Democrats will take back the House. I don't see how mathematically, it's not mathematically impossible, but it's very unlikely that they'll even touch the Senate. I would expect the Republicans maybe even to expand their majority in the Senate. And I believe that America works better when there's a divided government. There's a degree of, there's no point in having a co-equal branch of government such as Congress if it's not going to serve as a check to the president and if it's just going to be a rubber stamp then there's really no point then, then you could just have a benevolent dictator like Jesse uh, Jesse Ventura said I don't think this uh, he said the system doesn't work he, he thinks that we would function best with a benevolent dictator which is where Jesse goes off the reservation. It's like, right. I like him a lot of right. times. They go, yeah, I can't, I can't. but I get his point. I get his point. You could get a lot more done if you could just get it done. But right. And, and checks and balances are very checks important. and balances. And, and I think that's why uh, we have this three branches of government. It's there for a reason. It's not for a particular politician or a particular age or era. It's for all time. And it doesn't mean that you have to have a, you know, a Republican president and a democratically controlled Congress, but there is an acknowledgement there has to be some degree of balance. Right. And we've, unfortunately, we've gotten down to this point where we only think it's two parties. And, it, and, yeah. and, and, and because of Citizens United, I will say this to get political, there's so much money involved in politics. It's really not even about parties anymore. It's, a, it's about uh, an, an oligarchy. A few people have an, a, a disproportionate amount of involvement and, and, and influence in our political system. And that bothers me greatly. Well, and and, I, and I'll, I'll say with, with, with Kavanaugh, you know, we, we heard for weeks, we're talking about a 35-year-old you know allegation no charges no you know no no court trial no you know nothing was fi and and this is going to run him through um you know that happened but i would rather talk about his patriot act i'd rather talk about you know his actual legislative background and his history instead we had weeks of diversion on this you know shiny keys dangling and jingling mm -hmm. to distract the baby and and we kind of didn't really look into what kind of judge he was and and i f I, I felt I, I felt like they got me. I, I felt like I got wrapped up in, hey, innocent until proven guilty. You can't just point fingers. It's not the Salem witch trials. It's not McCarthyism. You know, me too, to a point. But like, you can't do that to people and destroy them that way. And then I went, man, this is two wings of the dirty bird. The Republicans and Democrats are in this together. They want the surveillance state. They want the Patriot Act and a Judge Kavanaugh. So the Democrats put up some BS to keep us fighting each other while they got their person elected. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I, I feel like I kind of got duped personally and 
I'm still trying to make sense of wh- how I feel about that because I kind of feel like Republicans and Democrats are two wings of the same dirty bird. They are to a certain degree. I think it comes down to strategy or lack thereof. I think the Democrats made a fundamental mistake where they chased after the issue that they could not win because they wanted to make a point mm-hmm. as opposed as opposed to having a purpose. Now, there, I thought there was a legitimate issue if you spoke to the temperament of Judge Kavanaugh in that hearing, okay. as far as whether he was too partisan or whether he was going to be an impartial jurist. That, to me, was a legitimate issue, but that also goes back to what you were saying as far as looking at his legislative history. Like, for example, I had no problem that he was part of the Kenneth Starr investigation of, of Bill Clinton. That doesn't bother me at all. But if you're going to have that hearing, then make sure that everything in the hearing matters and it seemed like the democrats were in terms of their questioning it was mishmash it was all over there was no cohesive strategy and i i don't know if you heard this but i predicted on my show that there was this, this was not going to change anything the story was only going to end one way and that's because i knew my civics and most people were looking at the news aspect of it as opposed to the civics and the well, governmental the numbers, right the numbers matters. did not change right. and unless the numbers change the outcome is not going to change mm-hmm. you can talk about susan collins you can talk about bob corker you can talk about jeff flake but at the end of the day the numbers did not change it's yeah, you math can, you, you can tar and feather somebody all day but you know what good right. is it gonna do right you know i just I, we're seeing this where it's like the sjw's want heads on sticks they, yes. they they want a victim to hold up it's like we got him we got the bad man we got whether it's cosby or weinstein or kavan like it's just there it's just random pointing of fingers and some of it's true some of it's not true and it's it's just dangerous it's the witch trials it's salem witch trials it's mccarthyism it I'm concerned that that's kind of all we're hearing from the left. It's, we're going to point at you, we're going to demonize you, we're going to destroy you, so we can intimidate the rest of you from opening your mouth and standing up and getting part, you know, participating in the system. And I think that's a, that's, a, that's a tough spot to be in. I don't know if you see it the same way. We'll see in terms of when you're the party not in power, mm-hmm. you don't, you're not expected to be productive. You don't have to Fair do enough. anything. So if the Democrats retain control of the House... Is it going to be more of the same or are they going to somehow figure out a way to work with President Trump to get something done? Um, And I yeah, I mean, and and I know the other argument is made as far as when President Obama was in office, whether the Republicans were being obstructionist Mm -hmm. or whether they were trying to help America move forward. Uh, We have to get to the point where we actually put America first. Um, And I don't know if, if that's going to happen by this election. And sometimes you yeah, something I'm not going to hold my yeah, breath. Sometimes something bad has to happen for people to understand yeah. that we need to choose a different way forward. Fair, yeah. And that, might, that, that very well might be the case. Mo Kelly, we're, we're here at Politicon 2018 in, in Los Angeles, California. We both have things to do. I'm going to let you get going. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes of your time. Um, any final words? Uh, anything you want to plug? Anything you want to just like, like, let's let's bring this all together in a Mo Kelly way. Learn about your government. Learn that your local officials are far more important than federal officials in the sense of your uh, affecting your everyday life. Some people think voting for president is most important. No, it's actually your city council person. It's, it's actually your state legislators. It, it, it's your mayor, especially if you're in a small city. Those people have a much more profound impact on your life than just someone that you're voting for every four years. Participate in the midterms, make sure you vote, but also stay engaged, not so you can own the libs, not so you can just Put it, put it to the snowflake Republicans, but because you have a vested interest in making America better for not just you, but your community yeah. and country more broadly. Yeah, draw a circle around your neighborhood, a mile right. out. Like there are people that can help that. There, there's a, there's a, a, you know, somebody at your police station who's your senior lead of that area. There's a councilman for your area. There are people that can help you there. I mean, if you're going to try to fix Washington from from your backyard, like, good luck. You know, I, I think you're onto something. Yeah, it's fun on Facebook, but it doesn't change anything. Uh, speaking of Facebook, where should people follow you, Mo? Sure, you can follow me at the Mo Kelly Show, forward slash, uh, actually, Facebook.com, forward slash, the Mo Kelly Show. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, at Mr. Mo Kelly, M-R-M-O-K-E-L-L-Y, and my website is MrMoKelly.com. Excellent. Mo, I appreciate it, man. I've, I've, listened, so I've listened to you for years and uh, by chance happenstance. I appreciate it. Uh, we, we ran into him here when we were checking in at the media room and I said, I got to talk to this cat. He's an interesting guy. You have an important voice on KFI. And I appreciate you taking a few moments today, All right, sir. On with Politicon. Let's do it. Absolutely. To be continued. Thanks. Cool. Thanks man, I, so much. I appreciate you. No, man. come on. That was great. Your guide to the truth. The new American media. 
Sportsbook.com. I know the feeling. You are your on camera, you're your tech, and your engineer, and you have to do it all. Jack of all trades. We won't even get to the master stuff. It's 2018. You can't even say that word, right? Uh, you, you can say it, but there are probably consequences attached. Indeed.